Hey, I'm with Marcus J. Moore, who is an editor, he is a curator, he is an award-winning music journalist, and he's an author, honey. You ready? Let's get hype. And if the beat live, you know little juke made it. You split your time between Kenya and America. A lot of people may not know that. Uh, what brought you to Kenya? My wife brought me to Kenya. <laughs> <laughs> She came out here in September 2018 uh -huh. for work. Mm -hmm. I, at the time, was uh, working on chapter one of the Kendrick book. Mm -hmm. What made you write this book? Yo, um, I, um, well, I'll try to give you the abridged story because it's a long <laughs> one. But about four years ago, mm -hmm. when I was still working full time at Bandcamp as a senior editor, uh -huh. I was uh, walking to lunch mm -hmm. randomly and I was playing to Pimper Butterfly on headphones. Right. And I was like, and again, because I'm such a jazz head, I was just like, man, there's a there's a book in here. I want to know how Thundercat came into this room, how Robert Glasper and Anna Wise, mm -hmm. how all these people came into this space. And so I ran the idea to, at first I was just going to write a book about the Pepper Butterfly and that's it. Okay. I wasn't going to write about the other records. Okay. And so I ran it past some people who were smarter than me in book publishing. Okay. And um, we, uh, yeah, I, I just. Brainstormed I always, almost? We just brainstormed yeah. and at the same time. I had always knew I, the next plateau for me was writing a book. I just didn't know what the book was going to be. Okay. And it ended up being the butterfly effect. Yeah. So wow. I guess that's the, the best way to explain it. Just I'm a huge fan. Uh-huh. And that record in particular, I still play it and I still pull things from it. Right. And so that's what kind of pulled me into the butterfly effect. It is the first book on him ever. Yeah. It's still history that's being told. Duh. So naturally, so naturally <laughs> there's this like... Okay, it's too soon. You know, why are we doing this now? Mm. But I think it's still important. You know, as corny as it may sound, no, there's nothing you got to give flowers to, to black art. Because all too often when somebody passes, then we hop on Twitter and we're like, oh, man, we should have gave him the flowers. The man. facts, though. Yeah. The facts. Did you lie, though? No. Did you no, lie, no, though? No, no, no. That's what I've been telling people. So it's like, yo, just celebrate the art. Just celebrate. It's nothing wrong with telling your brother, your sister yeah. that you love him. Absolutely. There's absolutely. Yeah. Do you feel like maybe in the black community, we maybe and because you spend time in Kenya, maybe you can touch on this. Do you think it's a cultural thing for black folk almost in general to be a little bit more, quote unquote, humble and like not shout us out in the same way that maybe a white artist would get it? Yeah, I think it's because when you're a black artist, you have to work 10 times as hard just to get that look. True. You know, so I think that's part of it, too. So. Mm. So. And on the flip side of that, I can't totally absolve black artists as well, because mm. there are certain people when they get to that platform, they close the door behind them, which is always yeah. extremely heartbreaking. Exactly. Yeah. So they close right. the door. So I think it's just we're all in these little silos. And I know I'm guilty of this, too, where you got your head down, you're working. I get you. You're not really paying attention to what's going on outside. Mm. So mm. it's not even a thing where it's you're you're being malicious. Mm. You're just so busy doing your own thing right. that you don't even look up to give love to somebody else like you should be doing. Right, 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 right. Did, did you feel when you were writing this book and you are trying to give one of your favorite artists their flowers um, and kind of highlight their accomplishments while they're still here and while they're still very, very young as well. Totally, yep. um, you know, young in the game, young age-wise, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, but doing really phenomenal stuff. Did you feel hella pressure because it's the first damn biography being written on Kendrick. So it's going to come with eyes, baby. Those flowers, when you when you put those flowers down, they're going to come with hella eyes. Let me tell you, yeah, there was a hell of a lot of pressure, mm. like, writing it to the point where I had to, like, I had to back off. And that was right. part of the reason why I wrote about 60% of the book here. Mm. Because, don't get me wrong, people wow. totally knew about it here, like, because I go to co-working spaces and cafes and yeah. stuff. And so people would ask. But it was nothing like the pressure of trying to write that book in New York, in Brooklyn. Be yeah, yeah, bet. Mm. yeah. Say so, less, yeah. yeah. Where, where, like, then people say, what are you writing? Oh, right. Just, just a, the first biography on Kendrick, what's up? Yeah, exactly. And then you <laughs> cut the corner, you see somebody you know who you've covered. Mm, you know, because I, right. I live in a community where it's, like, a lot of black artists there. Mm. And there's a lot of black, uh, there's a lot of music journalists. Right. And so it was always a topic of conversation. Mm. So I was like, I need, to, I need to dip and go finish writing this thing. So I'm in the apartment, just kind of, you know, plugging away. She Your apartment in New York, Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. Uh -huh. Yeah, so uh, I'm plugging away. She comes in with the suitcase. Her eyes, are, I've never seen her eyes this big. And she was like, what do you think about moving to Nairobi as the next wave? And mm -hmm. I was like, all right. It was literally that easy. So that's, that's how I got here. Okay, I love it. Do you speak any Swahili? 
No, but I need to learn. I need to learn. Okay, I was gonna. Add, I was gonna say like, can we expect any books in Shang coming soon? Like, I am. I, I'm, I need to take classes. I swear, because I, I, I don't want to be like the arrogant foreigner, like no everybody bow to my language. I, I don't definitely do don't. You don't give that vibe at all. Yeah, so I'm learning. But I'm I feel learning. I feel you on on learning. Do you um hang out with a lot of Kenyans? Yeah, like yeah, a lot yeah. of Kenyan friends. Okay, just tell them to speak to you in in Swa then. Tell them to teach you a thing. Or oh, something. that's the that's best cool. way to learn. I find like conversationally yeah. versus like sometimes going to a class. You'll remember it more also oh, in, in that's, practice. That's a good idea. You know, it's just like the sawa sawa. You know, you just it starts okay. it starts as little as that, then it keeps growing. And then it just builds. Yeah, pole pole too. Oh, that's a good idea. So, who's your favorite Kenyan author? Ooh, that is a good question. Uh, my buddy Shiru. Okay just came out with a book not too long ago okay. that's, that's really great and it's stocked in a textbook center okay um and she's it's like a national uh bestseller right now so i would say i know that's totally a biased answer you're allowed to be biased once yeah, in a while. yeah yeah i got yeah. i got a shout her out okay Absolutely. okay yeah. bet 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 because a lot of what you write about tends to be about pop culture and politics and uh the black community and black arts in what ways do you think black musicians are kind of helping this new age civil rights struggle um, that's happening in America right now. And do you feel that people could be doing more or doing things differently? I feel like um, black artists now in particular are, they're, they're showing that there's more than one kind of protest. Mm -hmm. So there's one thing that you can hop on a mic and you can yell and you can scream and that's a protest song. You can talk about what's happening. But I feel like there's also this undercurrent of underground artists now who are they're doing protest music by simply talking about themselves and stuff that's true to them. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not necessarily baked in the traditional definition of protest, but the fact that they're talking about something different and they're doing different kinds of music mm -hmm. is a form of protest. So for instance, like um, he also works with Kendrick, this cat named Flying Lotus. Mm -hmm. He didn't, this album isn't recent, but he came out with um, this jazz record in 2014 called You're Dead, right? And it's and it sort of was this first jazz album in a long time that sort of brought it back to the forefront. So I say all that to say, I feel that another form of protest is just doing what's unexpected. Mm. You know, so like everybody over here can do the same thing. They can do the mainstream stuff. But it takes a certain kind of bravery to, you know, go over here and talk about some, not necessarily black plight, but you're spinning it into something positive. And so I feel like people are doing what they can because we're also in a time of, of COVID mm -hmm. where we're all kind of cooped up. No one's really thinking straight. Yeah. <laughs> no one's really, you know, yeah. no one has their faculties about them. So we're all doing the best that we can. So the fact that you can even come out with some art at these times is is tremendous right because you're so preoccupied with other things mm -hmm. who are your top five favorite musicians ever okay i'm a do i have to rank them you don't just, if you if you want to okay. you can but i'm not gonna force it that's, okay. i already thought this was a hard question you ready to no 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 i'm ranking. just saying like i'm just ready but no 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 okay. i'll just as they come to my head Bed, do you Stevie Wonder. Okay. Stevie Wonder for sure. Yeah. Um, Alice Coltrane. Okay. Alice Coltrane. Mm -hmm. I would also say, um, I'm going to say also like Questlove from the Roots. I've always loved, like especially in, in the 90s, mm. you know, the way he uh, produced records. Mm. So Questlove, I'm going to say, um, oh man, I always know this stuff until I'm asked. Um, Aretha Franklin. Okay. Aretha Franklin. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna hit you with a wild card. I think it's a wild card. I think it's music, but or he's a you know it's not like instruments or anything okay. like that. But Boogie Down Productions, KRS One. Okay, okay. Wild card. Will you rank them? No, I don't know if I. I mean, I could. Okay, I'm not. Yeah, to. I'm not. I'm not gonna force you to do that. <laughs> what I will force you to do is tell me now your top five favorite songs ever. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, this is too easy for me. No, it's no, no, no. <laughs> so no, um, Roberta Flack, uh, I Can See the Sun in Late December. Okay. It's an amazing song. Mm -hmm. And I also, oh, Stevie Wonder, Living for the City. Okay, Stevie Wonder, Living for the City. That's true, you've given me. Okay, I'll give you two. All right. <laughs> I'm going to say uh, Sly and the Family Stone. Okay. Stand. Okay. I love that song. Um, this is probably an obvious answer, but Q 
Kendrick Lamar, all right. Okay, I figured. Uh-huh. Is one. Uh huh. The last one's got to be good. The last one's got to be good. I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say. Um. Yo, I'm gonna say the roots. The roots. Uh, the next movement. Okay. Your second book is coming out, or you're writing something? I am, yeah. I'm writing a book about De La Soul. Hey! High and Rising. Okay. High and Rising, yep. It's, okay. It's the same deal. So it's, it's also a culture biography where I'm not only talking about De La, but I'm contextualizing them within, like, it's not going to be so rooted in race with this one, mm-hmm. but it's like... Um, the fact that there's a suburban hip hop group coming from Amityville and and you know it it taps into like a hippie culture. Totally, because they're yeah. they almost are like that California dude, exactly. like ca- oh, black East. California skater dude. You know right, what I mean? Right, from like Long Island. So <laughs> right, like, yeah. Exactly, yeah, but they feel you know they still have that like yeah, this, um, that, that almost psychedelic sound. Absolutely, you so, feel yeah. me? That's why I associate it with more of a Cali type vibe yeah. yeah but it's also about the rise of like hip hop in general because yeah. they were coming out as hip hop was becoming of age so mm-hmm. I'm talking to cats who were in the downtown Manhattan scene in the early 80s I'm talking to like you know the whole native tongues movement where it was like them and tribe and mm-hmm. Tifa and all of that so it taps into a lot of things at the same exact um, but that's the next project so yeah I love it I love it I love it favorite Kenyan musicians who are your favorite Kenyan musicians? I've been listening to a lot of a lot of Nairobi music from the seventies. Okay, cool, cool, um, cool. Um, so there's this band. I think the album is called. Um, the band is called Black Savage. Okay. And the the album is called Black Savage, and it's literally like um, some seventies like funk meets rock meets. Okay. I don't know. It's like this sort of culmination of all kinds of music mm-hmm. and. That stemmed from me wanting to, you know, sort of fall into local culture, you know, because yeah. again, I want to just absorb everything. Mm-hmm. So Black Savage, I love that record. I love Blinky Bill's music. Okay. And not too long ago, I actually met up with um, this singer named Nasambu. Uh-huh. Um, so I've been studying her music too. She's dope. So okay. I would say those are my top. Okay. Yeah. Super dope. Amazing, Marcus. Thank you so much. I loved this. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for, I appreciate it. This was keeping me on my toes. Ow. Perfect. That's it. Ah.